Good morning, everybody. So I would like just to share some information about you, about the understanding climate growth relationship for parkland species for their sustainable regeneration in the Sahel. Next. So this is the outline of my presentation. It will be focused on the four main points. Next. So as you know, we are talking about uh, ecosystem-based adaptation. So there is a need, we need to know the species uh, which highly contribute to improve the livelihood of rural population. So that we notice that most of the species in West Africa, the relationship with climate, state is, uh, climate change is still unknown. That's why there's a need to understand the growth, the growth relationship with, uh, with climate and these species in order for better management of these species. And to you to study this relationship, we use uh, the science that we call a triggering analysis or dendrochronology, which provide more info, the, which provide this relationship between tree growth and climate. And the issue is that until now, there is, there is still lack of intensive treating analysis in the tropic. So that's why there's a need, we need to better explore this science in order to understand more the relationship between the tree and climate, which are highly contribute to improve our livelihood. Next. So for that, in terms of material and method, we collected the sample in different areas in Mali and uh, in the Burkina Faso. And the species uh, we collect is uh, Vitellera paradoxa, uh, Daniela oliveri, Lania microcarpa in Burkina and also in Mali. So the, sample, uh, the N is the sample size of these uh, three, three species collect in the field. The, the importance of this we collected is a number of three species. To these three species, are fine over agroforestry parkland, which support the farmer. Next. So about the material and metal, when we collect all these samples in different areas in Mali and Burkina Faso, we break it in the lab of dendrochronology at the craft in Nairobi. And then we proceed to, we, so we apply the standard dendrochronological method to analyze in the ring. You can notice that these are some tool in the lab. We are processing with the analysis. Next. So the, in, in the lab, we, we for the dendrochronological process, we generate the first step we use and we collect the sample, we collect the subsample to see if the sample will bring in the lab, have the ring or not. And these, uh, the, you can notice that the first, the, the first cigar, the arrow show and get the growing ring boundary. We need to know first to proceed. First, to understand if our, the sample we have have formed the ring or not. That is the most important first step we need to know before to proceed with the other step. Next. So we also get from the lab, we generate also the annual growth of each uh, sample we collected from the, the field. And then here we notice that when we got, try to compare the difference, the annual growth of the different species, we notice that for the parkland in Yamfula in Mali, the annual growth is better than the other one. That may be explained by the input uh, over the far, uh, the, the, the may be explained by the management of the farmland because sometimes farmers use some input, uh, we can have a positive effect on the tree growth. Yeah, next. And after we have the chronology that we develop for each species, here we have the, 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 the data in the yellow, yellow color, you can notice that the mean sensitivity and the standard deviation. These inform about how is the, provide information about annual intervariability of the tree growth. Whenever this valley for the mean sensitivity and the standard deviation, whenever this valley is, is less than 0.2, it means that the tree are, are more sensitive to environmental change. And this is our case. We notice that all these species are, are, not, are more variable. 
And then we have autocorrelation. The autocorrelation is the influence of the uh, preview growth years on the current years. It means that if this value is less than 0 0.5, it means that the tree have an, the, 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 tree, the current year is, the, tree, the, uh, the preview years have an impact on the current year. And also we have EPS. EPS is Express Population Signal. When it is a, a, with a threshold of 0 0.85, we use a, the express population signal to uh, evaluate our chronology. Whenever our, uh, and our, the value of our chronology generation should be more than 0 0.85. So based on uh, the funding we have, we have here, most of uh, all the uh, EPS value of our different species is higher than 0 0.085, which implies that our chronology is uh, acceptable in the framework of dendrochronology. We, we have also the T value and the mean GLK. The, uh, the GLK is a, a coefficient of parallel variation between trading theory. And this value should be at least uh, 65. When we consider all our GLK for different species, we notice that this value is, uh, our value is higher than the standard hole, which means that our species of all, all our samples here was well cross-dated. This is the history of the tree. Next. And so we check the climate growth relationship between the, the uh, three species, the, stand, the, the precipitation and uh, the, ramp, the annual rainfall and the standard chronology. And then we notice that, you, you can notice that the correlation value is uh, zero for the first figure is 0 0.5, which is significant for Vitellara paradoxa. This is the standard and for Kuchala and uh, Yamfolila. Next. But is, here is a residual chronology we use with a seasonal measure precipitation. The seasonal measure precipitation for our case is from the rainfall from June to September. This is a major seasonal precipitation. And we correlate with this with the tree grow uh, using the stand, a residual chronology. We have standard chronology and residual chronology. But the, the residual chronology is a, a kind of chronology we proceed using autoregressive modeling to remove autocorrelation. But when you consider the standard chronology, you have effect of uh, autocorrelation. But if you use the residual chronology, it means that there's no effect of residual uh, autocorrelation because we use autoregressive modeling to remove the effect of uh, autocorrelation. Here, we are still with uh, the, the, the species of Vitellara paradoxa. Also, we found a good relationship between the tree grow and the climate, the, which relationship is significant. Next. Next. Here we have also the correlation analysis between uh, chronology of Lania microcarpa. Uh, and seasonal precipitation in, Bur uh, in Mali and Burkina Faso. Lania, how you know Lania aussi, Lania also is one of the Q3 species uh, of agroforestry, which uh, provide uh, some fruit to support uh, the uh, farmer. So we, even for this species, we got also a significant relationship in Mali also in Burkina with the uh, residual chronology. That means the the rainfall is one of the fact, main factors which have impact the tree growth in the Sahel. Next. We have also one of the species that we call Daniela Oliveri. Which, uh, we made the correlation between the standard chronology index and the precipitation. And we found also the, relation, the significant relationship between tree growth and the, the standard chronology. Next. And it was the same for the residual chronology. Now, finally, it means that the, all these three are more sensitive to the climate variability. Next. So in terms of conclusion and perspective, we can confirm that the, uh, the formation of an annual growth ring 
This we see all these species show that their form annual grow ring and that it can be a successful uh, uh, for application for dendrochronography. It means that this species, the, the way we, we get a correlation between tree grow and standard chronology may confirm that this species can be successful for dendrochronological application in the uh, Sahel region of West Africa. And there is a need also to extend this species to uh, this study to other species in the Sahel region in order to know how is the relationship between this species and the, 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 the climate in order to, because you are in the framework to, for land restoration, we need to know which species is better or not before to uh, promote uh, this kind of activity. And also there's a need also to make a comparative study according to climatic, climate, uh, uh, climatic gradient in order to show how the species will respond in different climatic gradient. This is a few lines that I want to share with you. Next. Thank you for your, thank you for your attention.